the only productive act is to eliminate pain. I mean, if pain is the source, the suffering, deprivation, whatever the words. That's another one where we get into this whole word thing, because what do these words mean? There's 4,000 words for an unpleasant feeling, and they're all, they all have dramatically different um, intensities uh, and depths of what they what would you call suffering, uh, a hangnail versus, you know, a spike through your head. Um, you know, these are different experiences, and yet we might call them the same thing. We might use a generic word like pain, and that really doesn't cover it. So yeah, that's the core of my theory, though, is that pain is the only known value in the universe. It is the only thing we can know for certain, in my opinion, we can say for certain, that it has a negative component, that it is undeniably negative, that it is without a doubt negative, because we know it through personal experience. We taste it, we feel the coldness, we, 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 we qualify its existence through our own instruments, through our own senses. We are able to know this experience, and by knowing some part of this experience, we can say generically that this is, an, this is a negative force, this is an unpleasant thing, this is a nasty, this is, a, this is the, the root of all evil, whatever you want, however we want to, like I said, there's four million ways to describe this. I'm just saying that, you know, I keep using the term negative just because it seems everybody understands the positive-negative coalition, and I'm just saying that it's, it's negative. It's the, it's the known negative, it's the one negative we know of, it is like the ultimate photon, it is the, it is the constituent material that meaning is made out of, because we know it for sure is a negative. Like I said, we're not sure about positives, we're not sure whether there is any true positive in the sense that feeling good, feeling happy, may be more about a release of negative rather than, or a letting go of negative, rather than a true positive. So that makes, like I said, it makes, the, it makes this whole thing complicated, and then it gets even more complicated by context, and, and that was the problem I had with, you know, me and Matt go back and forth on, because Matt keeps applying everything to a social context. There's no nothing without the society for him. Um, that is the whole, this network is the whole meaning. And to me, these truths exist, whether there's people here, whether there's one person, or whether there's 10 million people. You don't need a community to make these judgments. You don't need a, look, I could be the only person, I could be the only human being on Earth. I would still have a whole planet full of living creatures consuming each other and, and experiencing all kinds of conscious experiences. And so there would still be a judgment to be made whether that was productive or destructive. Um, and so I, I really, you know, it's, we, we keep going back and, you know, it's even you use abortion as an example, and that would to me would be, you know, just, just how, I, I don't even understand how you can be at all confused on that issue. And, and there was some comment about this too, um, you know, by Mr. Peabody. Um, you, you know, as, as, if, as if rocks and people were the same thing. You know, as if somehow they had the same meaning, a, like a grain of sand and a human being are, the, are equals? No, they're not. One has a, a central nervous system. One produces this incredible, bizarre manifestation called consciousness. And that's what we're fucking talking about. We cannot be par There's no parody. I could take a, if I had a, a tomato in my hand and I squashed it, I'm not squashing a, a, a thing with a central nervous system. I might be killing life forms, but I'm not killing significant life forms. I'm not killing meaningful life forms all right but if I had a kitten in my hand then I have something that means something it has meaning because it has that capacity to feel it has that vulnerability it has meaning that the other things don't have and it is not human arrogance that says this it is common factual sense it has an attribute that the other things don't have I have attributes that a rock does not have and uh, it is silly to, to, like I said, it's not about something being alive, it is about something being conscious and vulnerable through that consciousness. And so anyway, but like I said, I don't even know how there's an argument on abortion, because obviously the consciousness hasn't developed to any extent. It's only an emotional reaction. I mean, you, you eat your dinner, the thing you ate for dinner had more conscious substance than a newborn baby, and it's just a fact of life. That is just a factual truth. 
a newborn baby isn't even capable of the, the, this this elaborate consciousness because its skull has been malformed to get through the birth canal. Its brain has been compressed. It is not functioning yet. It hasn't even put itself back together yet. And so there's no possible way it is consciously experiencing anything close to what a mature cow is experiencing consciously. So there's not even an argument here in my opinion. Um, but anyway, I don't who, who wants to get sidetracked there. Um, so anyway, it, it's just there's there's I'm not and, and then the other argument is is that it's almost like the, to talk about this is to be applying it. It's, look, there's there's no risk of of this. Like I said, and, and make the distinction. There's a, a huge distinction between social morality, the morality we agree to as human beings to live with each other peaceably and uh, humanely, decently, um, honorably, um, you know, whatever word you want to apply there, words again, that kind of morality, that's a different kind than the morality I am applying when I say that meaning, morality dry, derived directly from meaning, morality that has objective meaning, not, not subjective meaning, not, not social contract meaning, not what we owe each other meaning, not any of that bullshit. And we only owe these things because of the doubt that exists. I mean, I absolutely cannot, um, this, this thing I'm describing, this thing called meaning that I'm sitting here attempting to describe, I can't, it, it, it is um, an intangible. It is a concept, it is a, a mental construction attempting to duplicate a description of reality. And so yes, I can't say, I don't have the confidence to say, I can say for sure, I can override the social contract, the social morality, to apply this universal morality. I'm just saying it should be part of the discussion, because this, this is the more important morality in the end. The objective morality is the one we want to find. Merely finding a social contract that works, that keeps people alive, is fine. But in my opinion, it can be very much opposed to the objective morality. We could be, we could be falling far short of our objective obligations and have a perfectly satisfactory social contract that keeps us from killing each other. That's really not good enough by the objective standard. The objective should come first, but it can't come first until we can be certain of it. And uh, that certainty, I think, I think it can, it, it's, I think we're getting close. I think we're getting close in terms of the fact that we, we're, we, we're beginning to know most of the, the material truths of the universe. We're understanding its structure. The tricky part is figuring out its, its, its evolution. Um, I mean, does it repeat? Does it, does it collapse? Does it re-expand? Um, these are questions that are a little more difficult to answer. And, and trying to figure out just how bizarre and unique intelligent life is in the universe. Um, just how, are we an aberration or are we um, something that inevitably pops up in universes? And like I said, is there any, <laughs> the, the, the ultimate um, conclusion of all this would be to figure out whether we should be living to minimize the damage we do or whether we all might ultimately have a purpose in that if we can control some part of the universe, control this mechanism, this um, the universe itself, um, whether exercising that power might be worth doing, playing God, because maybe, you know, if there is no God, somebody should be doing it. There should be some intelligent force controlling this mechanism, and um, that would be my argument, and I think I'm about out of time. So, uh, I don't think I'll go a third part, but we'll see what the responses are and see if I'll need to.